Hello, travelers. Welcome back to, excuse me, let me start over. Welcome back to Show and Tell with Reach the World. For over 20 years, Reach the World has used virtual exchange to inspire youth to become curious, confident global citizens. My name is Tim, and as part of Reach the World's efforts to support educators and families during the COVID-19 pandemic, we are sharing free live stream show and tell events with members of our global community. You can find an updated calendar of live stream events and much more at athome.reachtheworld.org. For today's show and tell, I'm excited to welcome Anna Braverman. Anna recently returned from, from Puebla, Mexico, where she taught English to future teachers as part of the Fulbright English Teaching Assistant Program. During her time in Mexico, she discovered an interest in jumping off of waterfalls, and that's what she's going to tell us about today. To our live stream viewers, please be sure to let us know you're here and share any questions for Anna using the YouTube chat bar to your right. We'll get to as many questions as we can. And without further delay, welcome to Show and Tell, Anna. All right, thank you so much for the introduction, Tim. Um, so hi, um, like Tim said, my name is Anna Braverman and today I'm going to be talking about jumping off waterfalls. Um, but just to give a little background on who I am, um, so I am originally from Scarsdale, New York, about an hour outside of New York City. Um, I graduated from Colby College in 2019, which is a small liberal arts school in central Maine. Um, and I have had many experiences abroad. So I lived in London from the ages of 11 to 13, which really sparked my interest in cultural exchange. Um, and I had the opportunity to visit many different um, European countries. Um, and after that, um, I had the incredible opportunity to study abroad in Cordoba, Spain, which is in um, southern Spain, so in Andalusia, my junior year of college. And that's when I really was able to put my Spanish into, into practice. Um, and then I just came back, um, as Tim said, from living um, in Puebla, Mexico, um, which is the 17th century um, colonial city. Um, it's about two and a half hours southeast of Mexico City, um, which is the capital. Um, and it is an absolutely beautiful location with incredible architecture. Um, and I am very excited to um, tell you all about uh, a couple trips that I took while I was uh, living there and teaching English um, at a college. So I'm going to share my screen and pull up my presentation. Okay. Okay. All right, so yes, again, this is jumping off waterfalls in Mexico. So let's dive in. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> okay, so um, we are going to travel to two different locations. So first, we're gonna go to La Huasteca Potosina, which is this region that I've circled um, in, the, uh, in the circle uh, up top. And so this is a part of a state called San Luis Potosí. And so La Huasteca Potosina is characterized by um, its humidity, it's a low-lying region, and there you can find um, absolutely stunning jungles, canyons, waterfalls, valleys, so it's really a thrill seekers, absolute dream, um, an adventurer's heaven. Um, and let's see, then we are going to travel down to Puebla, which is where I lived. So that's the smaller circle um, closer to the bottom of the screen. Um, and we are going to visit a site called El Aguacate, which literally translates to avocado. Um, and this is a site about an hour outside of Puebla. Um, and in order to reach this site, you have to park um, uh, in the nearest town and walk about an hour along a cow path. Um, and when you finally arrive, it's a site of stunning waterfalls, beautiful aquamarine pools. And I had the opportunity to go with some of my best friends from Puebla and to experience some amazing jumps. So I went with a group of about 30 people to La Huasteca Potosina um, and we did a guided tour of the region for three days and then two weeks later um, after getting all my jumping experience 
um, over there, I went with some friends in early December to El Aguacate for my highest jump, which is pretty high and you'll be able to see it. Um, all right, so let's, let's travel to La Huasteca Potosina. Here we go. All right, so uh, here we are at Tamasopo, um, which is part of La Huasteca Potosina. And it is a town with unbelievable waterfalls. Um, there are just so many incredible sights to see just in this one part of um, the bigger area of Huasteca Potosina. So the group and I, um, we went to this site of maybe about six waterfalls um, and there were a ton of man-made jumps uh, and different activities. So on the left, you can see this great looking picture of me uh, going off a rope swing. You know, I look super, super professional. I got a really good grip. Uh, you know, my legs are wrapped around the rope like it's supposed to be. I'm sort of the focal point of attention. So let's watch this video and see how it actually went. <laughs> <laughs> so not that great um so rope jumping is actually a lot harder than i originally anticipated um it looks super easy you know you think oh i'm gonna be like tarzan this is gonna be epic but it actually um requires a lot of strength which i do not have um and it actually really hurts your hands because the rope slides through and you get a terrible rope burn but Nonetheless, that didn't stop me from doing this exact jump about three times. Um, the adrenaline rush was absolutely um, incredible. So um, you can see in the background of the left photo, um, behind that tree, there's a little plank. So this is one of the man-made jumps and we're gonna go there next. Um, so this was my first ever jump. So let's... Check it out. Okay, so here is a closer view of that jump. And you can see me, I'm the second one with the um, blue life vest. And you can see me like this, really nervous. Um, it doesn't look like it's that high, but from up there, it is terrifying. So this jump is about eight meters or 26 feet high, which is about the height of a two and a half story building. Um, so it's a lot higher than it looks. Um, and it was so terrifying from the top because you just see this churning, churning water and you have no idea what's underneath. You know it's safe because you're, you know, you're with a guide, but um, it's scary. So my friends and I, we pulled one of our friends, our guy friends over and we said, come on, you go first. We make sure it's safe <laughs> and then we'll go. So here is this video. Um, this is my first jump and you can see how scared I, how scared I am in the video. So here we go. So I'm telling him, go. I said, como fue? So how was it? All right, here I go. <laughs> so I was so excited. I jumped actually out of the screen. Uh, so yeah, so that was a really scary experience, but I sort of learned from this that you really just have to suspend um, your fear and really like the Nike uh, motto, just do it. Um, because if you spend a lot of time looking down, you are, you are not going to want to do it because everything in your body tells you do not jump <laughs> um, uh, because it's potentially dangerous um, or so it seems. But anyways, I was able to successfully do this jump. Um, so after Tamasopo, um, sort of the culmination of our trip was uh, this place called Mikos, which is a site of incredible waterfalls, lush jungles. There are many activities there. Um, uh, there's even, you can bike in the air. So there's a thin cord that stretches along the canyon and you're attached to ropes and people are biking up there. So while we were jumping down, we could look up and just see people um, biking in the sky they're zip lining, so it's just an unbelievable location. Um, so here you can see on the left is a photo of my entire group. 
Um, and there you can get a sense in that photo of the of just the color, the brilliant color of the water. It's just aquamarine. I'd, I'd never seen waters like this before um, in my life. And I traveled to many places, uh, many beaches, um, and I'd never seen anything like this. So with a guide, we jumped down seven different waterfalls. Um, and so we started at the top there. And then if you look on the right, you can see sort of how as a group we jumped. So, um, so this is kind of like jumping and walking off waterfalls. <laughs> so um, we would line up sort of uh, coiled like a snake um, in a sort of a snake formation. And we would hold on to one another. Um, here we're posing, so we're not, but we would hold on to the back of each other. I actually, I was in the front the entire time. Um, I got really excited about jumping. And so I wanted to be the first one all the time. Um, and so we would hold on to each other and actually walk down the rock face of these waterfalls. And then, uh, like you can see in the third picture, just fly off. Um, and it was incredibly exhilarating. Um, the highest jump here was again about eight meters, 26 um, feet or two and a half stories tall. Um, so it was an incredible, incredible experience because you would jump off the waterfall, you would have this absolute rush of adrenaline, and then you would have to swim um, to the next one where you would then line up again with all your friends you made on this trip um, and then jump down again. So it was just an incredible climax to this trip. Um, so then now we're going to go back to Puebla. So it's about an 11 hour drive from the Huasteca Potosina, we're gonna go back down to Puebla and head to the Aguacate. Um, so the Aguacate is that place that I mentioned earlier, which is about an hour outside of Puebla. And it is um, sort of a, a forest. Um, there are many cows and uh, different uh, animals that, that you can see while you're walking to the site. Um, dogs, cats, and then, you know, other wild animals. It's, it's really untouched. Um, and so we got there and there I took the highest jump of my life. I was feeling super prepared after all these jumps in La Huasteca Potosina. Um, but first, I just want to show you guys a video of me actually diving head first. So I felt super confident after my three days in the Huasteca Potosina that I decided with some friends, I was going to uh, dive head first. So I'd actually gone up to this spot um, before and I, I couldn't do it. I backed away. And then I decided, you know what? I'm just going to do it. Just do it. Just do it. So uh, here you can watch me dive. So not the best dive in history, but a dive nonetheless. And I did it. And I dived right into the churning, um, the churning water. And it was, it was scary looking down. It was about um, three meters or nine and a half feet tall, which isn't that high compared to the other jumps. But to go head first, it was, it was scary. Um, and then just, just to quickly mention that um, kids do not do this at home um, unless you are with a guide or you're with people who are very experienced um, in this sort of activity. So here I wasn't with a guide like I was um, the entire time in La Huasteca Potosina, but I went to this site with poblanos or um, uh, people from Puebla who lived in Puebla their entire lives, who've gone to this site since they were babies um, and they know where it's safe to jump. So that's just a, a, a PSA to be very careful. Um, jumping is really exciting and fun, but make sure that you do it safely. Um, all right, so this is the last video that I'm going to show you all. And this was really my biggest achievement. Um, so you'll be able to see in this video uh, uh, a bit more of the site. And um, you will see my final jump. And I won't tell you how high it is. Maybe you wanna guess in the chat. I welcome you to guess. And then I'll tell you at the end. Um, but all right, here we go. So here's the, you'll get a great view of the aguacate and then you'll see me um, jumping down. And just a little background to this jump. So I was swimming around. I didn't really feel like doing this really big jump 
because, you know, I just been in La Josteca Potosina doing tons of jumping. You know, I thought, no, today I'm going to relax. But I see my friend up there and he has been sitting there for 30 minutes and he is too afraid to do it. So I say to myself, all right, I'm going to show him how it's done since I since I learned, you know, in three days, I'm now an expert. So I'm going to I'm going to show him. So I climbed up this rock face. I mean, it was literally rock climbing, um, uh, climbed up to the top. And after a couple of seconds, I just jumped. So I'll play the video. So there I am at the top. There's my friend who's sitting there. He can't jump. <laughs> that means, come on, Anna. <laughs> so you can see here just everyone clapping for me. <laughs> so that means it's super late labels. It's like, that was awesome. Um, and you can hear people clapping. Those are just people who they had been watching my friend trying to jump for half an hour. So when I finally jumped, they were so excited that someone did it. They just started clapping. Um, so that jump was about 12 meters um, or 39 feet. So about 3.6 stories tall. So it was really, really high. Um, it was really scary looking down. But again, I just thought, I know it's safe. My friends have done this for many, many years, their whole lives. I know I can do it. You just got to be free and just go. Um, so yeah, so those are some um, videos of my, photos and videos of my experience jumping um, off and around waterfalls in Mexico. But I just wanted to conclude by saying that um, really for my seven months in Mexico, that just, um, I noticed that, I mean, Mexico's natural beauty and really friendly people stands in stark contrast um, to the dominant narrative about Mexico as a dystopia that we often hear in the mainstream media. Um, so before I went to Mexico as a Fulbright scholar, I actually, I didn't even know um, that Mexico was just, was so beautiful um, that the diversity of landscapes um, was just, was, was so incredible. Um, I had no idea that sites like this even existed because um, I was never told about that because when I learned about Mexico, it always you know, had to do with illegal immigration, narco trafficking, um, things like that. And so I think that these kind of stories are really what's missing um, in the dialogue around Mexico um, in, our, in our country at the moment. So I hope that this really showcased um, some of the beauty that Mexico has. And I highly recommend um, doing a guided tour to La Huasteca Potosina in San Luis Potosí, um, and also visiting Puebla. I didn't show you the city, but it's, like I said, a beautiful colonial city. So if you're interested in architecture, in history, um, it, it's, it's an unbelievable site. Um, and then just at the top here, you can see the link to my blog. So I maintained a blog um, the whole time that I was abroad, um, and I'm still updating it. So um, it's right on the top right. So I encourage you all to, to check it out and you can actually see a full length video taken by our tour company of uh, our trip to San Luis Potosí to see a bit more of the, the environment. But thank you very much for listening and I'm happy to take questions. Yeah, awesome, Anna. Wow, what an experience. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so awesome to see such beautiful landscapes, kind of surprisingly lush, beautiful landscapes there. And a couple of things, well, before I, I say my question, I want to reach out to our, our amazing live stream audience right now and say, don't be shy. Anna wants to answer your questions. Please put them yes. in the live chat. <laughs> We'd be happy to pass them along. Uh, we didn't have any guesses as to how high that, that waterfall was, but hopefully people were thinking in their heads. Uh, mm -hmm. It looked... It looked pretty tall. It, <laughs> I'm yeah. sure it felt even taller. <laughs> yeah, from the top, it definitely looked taller. I, I think it's really cool and important to note that um, adventure travel and looking for fun, interactive ways of, of visiting natural places like this is, is a really popular way to experience new places. Yeah. And you can have a lot of fun and see a lot of the natural beauty of a place by exploring it in this way. I, a couple people 
online are, were commenting how they seeing your pictures has made them want to uh, have adventures of their own. It just kind oh, of awakens <laughs> awakens this need for like something really exciting. Yeah. Uh, and there are opportunities like that in every country. Uh, it's yeah. cool that you got to do this and found this in Mexico. I'm wondering, um, the, the audio of the videos doesn't come through so well in live stream, but I can imagine with those waterfalls that it was pretty loud. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the waterfalls were, were really pounding. I mean, you could really not, not hear yourself think, which kind of actually in the process of jumping um, <laughs> because it sort of blocked out that natural filter. But yes, the waterfalls are, are incredibly loud. And um, I don't know, I had never been so close to a waterfall. And it's a, it's an, it's a really incredible sound. It's, it's stunning. Um, and so I, I highly recommend everyone to to go to your nearest waterfall whenever, you know, everything opens up because just the sound alone is, is spectacular. Awesome. I'm wondering if like, as you walked into these places and as you um, worked your way around your region of Mexico, what sort of wildlife you encountered? Usually water attracts animals of different kinds. Did you see anything? So I would say on, so on my trip to San Luis Potosí, I saw mainly livestock. So um, we went through a couple of valleys. So I saw a bunch of cows, um, you know, a bunch of stray dogs, cats. But um, when I went to Oaxaca, which is uh, way down south in Mexico, um, to the coast, this beautiful um, town called Mazunte. So this just speaks to the incredible diversity of Mexico. So in San Luis Potosí, much farther north, I was exploring waterfalls, sort of jungle-like environments. And then in Masunte, um, it was sort of another jungle-like place, but it's right on the, on the, uh, on the water. Um, so it's beachy. Um, and there, I actually went on a boat tour um, in sort of these swamps, and I got to see crocodiles um, like this close to me, literally, like this close to me. Um, and I saw a bunch of, first, I saw iguanas for the first time in my life. Um, so when I was in Mexico, I definitely, I saw a lot of incredible wildlife. Um, I went to uh, Puerto Vallarta, um, which is in Jalisco, which is uh, on the West coast um, of Mexico, um, kind of the Northwest. Um, and there I went on a boat tour and I saw to these islands called um, uh, the Merietas Islands. And there we saw whales and dolphins. So, I mean, there's, there's just so much wildlife. Um, all over the all over the country. Wow, amazing. Um, we have a question from Jim in the chat. He wants to know how you became aware of these opportunities of these different waterfalls and whether or not this was an interest of yours before you went to Mexico. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I found out about the trip to San Luis Potosí. So uh, this, this is not really a, a common tourist destination, although it's becoming more and more so, which is one of the reasons why I really wanted to go. Um, because so many people, when they think about Mexican tourism, they think Cancun, um, which, I mean, I have a lot of thoughts on that, which we can discuss if you're all interested. Um, I did go to Cancun, um, but, uh, yes, yeah, San Luis Potosí is not a very, uh, uh, a lot of people don't travel there. It's not a very popular tourist destination. So, um, one of my roommates actually, whom I was living with at the time, she was from France. Um, she was a French teaching assistant. And she actually invited me to go on this trip with her. And it was a trip um, run by a tour company called Cholula Capital. Um, so Cholula is a beautiful, beautiful um, city uh, bordering Puebla. And so it's, it's absolutely stunning. I highly encourage you all to look it up, to Google it. Cholula, it's, it's beautiful. Um, it has some amazing architecture. Uh, it's just one of the most colorful places um, in every sense of that word that I've been to. Uh, so I, yeah, I heard about it from a friend and it was a tour agency. Okay, cool. I imagine, I mean, you spent quite a bit of time in Mexico more than someone who was just passing through it. If you referenced visiting some of these places with friends who had been going there since they were really young, uh, yeah. to a certain extent, integrating into the local community makes places like this known too. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I, if I had it, um, made friends with poblanos, which, with people who who uh, have lived in Puebla their entire lives. I, I would never, ever have gone to the Aguacate because it's a place 
that is not known to tourists at all. Um, I mean, it's, it takes an hour walking just to get there. So uh, it, it's really, it's, it's not well known. So if I hadn't met all these incredible people, um, I would never have uh, jumped 3.6 stories. So I'm really <laughs> grateful for that. <laughs> Um, for, for all of the young students who are watching this live stream and who are watching the recording of this after the fact and, and thinking this looks like a lot of fun, um, what yeah. advice would you have for them as they're getting their global interests up and running and are thinking about getting abroad? Yeah, so I would definitely recommend um, studying a foreign language. So I would say definitely um, if you're interested in the history of a part of the world, um, you're interested in sites in a part of the world, in the culture, definitely um, study the language if you can. I know that French and Spanish are sort of the most popular um, uh, in terms of sort of offerings in high schools and um, middle schools. Um, but yeah, I really recommend um, studying language because it opens so many, so many opportunities. Um, we, we were talking about this earlier that, I mean, I feel like it changes the topography of the brain and then it also just allows you to experience so much uh, topography around the world. So it's, it's just an incredible tool for meeting new people. Um, and I would just say, um, I don't know, read a lot about different places around the world, read um, fiction, um, get interested in other cultures and, and that will really um, spur your interest to travel. Um, and I just think travel as much as you can because um, like we were talking about earlier, just it's sort of like a snowball effect the more you travel, the more you want to continue traveling um, as your mind continues to open and expand. And you just realize what a gift it is to, to visit another place and to, to see so much more of the world. So yeah, I would say study language, um, read about different cultures. Um, you can travel anywhere with books. Um, and then if you have the opportunity to um, travel and that can even be um, around your local community of places you haven't been before. Um, Great. Yeah. And, and even, you know, uh, adventure travel or experiencing things like waterfalls can be the reason you visit someplace and then you stay and learn some more about the culture and the language and the food. It sort yeah, of brings definitely. me to my, my next question. Uh, all of this jumping around and climbing on rocks looks yeah. like it might have made you hungry. What was one of your favorites <laughs> that you ate? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, Yes, it did make me very hungry, actually. Um, Mexican cuisine is incredible. Um, so I think probably my favorite, uh, I love tacos. Uh, tacos um, are the best. They're the best. Tacos al pastor. So those are tacos um, with pork. And they usually come with pineapple and sort of salsa verde, which is a, a, green, a green sauce. So it's made of avocado and um, it has a lot of spicy spicy peppers in it. Um, so that, and it comes with cheese too. Um, so those tacos are incredible. And then another one of my favorite dishes was um, mole poblano. So um, in Puebla, Puebla is a very um, famous destination in Mexico for its um, gastronomy, so for its food. Um, and mole poblano is a, is a sauce, particular sauce, kind of a chocolate, chocolatey sauce. It has nuts and chocolate. Um, and they, they pour it on, on chicken, on, on different meats. And so um, uh, mole sauce with pollo or chicken, definitely also another one of my favorites. Mm, sounds delicious. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it is. I know that you're back home in New York now, hopefully yeah. plotting your next adventure. Now that you have a taste for adventure travel, <laughs> um, do you, where, where will you go next when given the opportunity? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, so I'm actually, I'm hoping to return to Mexico um, and actually uh, work in Mexico City um, this coming year. So as soon as things open up, um, I wanna work as an immigration attorney. So hopefully I'll be working um, at an immigration firm. And then for my next adventure, Valle del Bravo. I already know that's where I wanna go. It's a beautiful um, mountainous region um, right outside of Mexico City, and it's a stunning town. So Valle del Bravo, um, definitely recommend looking it up. It's beautiful, and I want to go on a hike there. So, <laughs> All right. Sounds fantastic. I hope you get there soon. I want to Great. thank you so much, Anna, for joining us today. It was a lot of fun seeing your videos and learning about these amazing lush waterfalls uh, in Mexico. 
Uh, also, thank you to our entire YouTube live stream audience for joining us today. There were a good number of you, and I know if you're joining us after the fact and watching the recording, um, it's just as fascinating to see these awesome uh, jungle waterfall uh, jumps of Anna's. You can join us again for a full lineup of amazing live stream events this week. There's a whole bunch left to go. Uh, there's a complete list of upcoming Reach the World live stream events at athome.reachtheworld.org. So we'll see you next time. Thanks again, Anna. Thank you.